Hey everyone, Philip here. Hey, Julia here. So today we wanted to talk a little bit about this new school that we are currently going through just down the street called Prototype. Mm -hmm. So Julia, what is Prototype? So after six months of nuclear power school, Prototype is more like a hands-on training where they have two decommissioned, three actually, decommissioned U.S. submarine permanently moored to the to shore. So they're called MTS moored training ship um, where unqualified operators like us were armed with book knowledge that we have just learned from a uh, nuclear power school that we can actually get our hands on the uh, operating nuclear reactor and like basically stand watch with the enlisted, uh, learn how to do maintenance and get qualified in other area. Yeah, so the hands-on portion, it does come. Uh, we've been there for, oh, we're closing in on two months now. And the first two months, it's a portion called off crew. So you aren't on the ships per se yet doing hands-on stuff, but you're preparing to do that. Like nuclear power school is more, I'd say like algebra and calculus focused with definitely a look into the, like how neutrons work and all that important stuff. But you aren't learning like the procedures and everything for actually operating. So we're kind of steering more towards that now and like casualties and just like everyday kind of thing. It's kind of like build, learning to build a car and then learning to drive the car before you actually drive the car, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah, you're learning like the principle, the laws, the physics, uh, the algebra behind nuclear physics. And now you're learning like, just like Phillips, that casualty, how systems work. If you've ever been qualified, like in the Navy, or we don't know about other branches, you will find it's actually quite similar. So they don't give you clear guidance. They kind of give you like multiple instructions like this thick and tell you, go figure it out. And you get like a qual qual qualification card, which is also this thick, just lines of signature, uh, very similar to SWO qualification. Um, yeah, surface warfare officer, which is right. what we are. So we did our first tours where we had to qualify as surface warfare officers on a conventional ship, not a nuclear powered ship. Right. Um, and then you actually go talk to enlisted petty officers. So we have a lot of qu nuclear qualified, um, second class petty officer, third or first class petty officer or chiefs who can do checkouts, which is you learn the knowledge from the instructions they give they give you, and then you find someone who's qualified. Uh, and there are four big areas. There's mechanic, electrician, um, RO, reactor operator, and ELT, which is more like plant chemistry. And you try to track those people down and then you're like, hey, can you please be so nice, be so kind? and have mercy on us and do a checkout with us, please. Yeah, so um, it's kind of more of a game. I mean, yes, there's still that knowledge aspect like we had at power school, but you also have to be a little more personable and you know go and seek people out and talk to them. It's not mm -hmm. like, hey, here's this uh, pink piece of paper, go and write down as much as you know on it and someone will grade it You know, the same standardized for everyone. Now it's like, you know, can you talk to someone, present this information, answer questions on the fly, things like that. But yeah, like Julia was saying, we are coming up pretty soon here on that portion where we'll start to be able to stand watches. So the Navy is kind of all based around like watches. When you go underway on a ship or a submarine, you're just standing all these regimented watches and uh, you have to be qualified to stand those watches. So you can't like go and drive the ship first thing when you get on because you have no idea what you're doing, or in this case, operate the plant. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what we're learning to do. And we're gonna start standing watches for all those people that we'll be in charge of. Uh, like Julia was saying, all those mechanics and electricians and reactor operators. Once we stand all those smaller watches, we'll work our way up and get qualified to stand the watch that observes all of them, mm -hmm. which is kind of what we're working towards right now. Right, absolutely. And I honestly have a, as someone who just came from the conventional Navy, I feel like I have a much, much more appreciation for this training pipeline that all submariners and nukes will have to go through. Uh, when I first showed up to my first ship, a destroyer, I have absolutely no clue how anything works. Um, I don't know how people stand watch. I don't know how maintenance is done. When people tell me to do a, a tag out audit, I don't even know what that is. Um, and here with the nuclear training pipeline, I think everyone gets a base understanding of how things work. 
what right looks like rather than just go figure it out and have someone tell you oh this is what right looks like even that not might not be what right looks like yeah definitely. um and another huge thing i appreciate is that uh is that you know like right now i see the incense the submariners before they even get to their ship they're forming a habit of reading instructions prior to asking questions and that's such a valuable um skill that i did not have during my first tour um just navy has tons and tons of instructions as they can be very very hard and boring to read but that's how things are supposed to work not just you know like third class petty officer tells you oh man this is how we do it um so like i think i really appreciate the training pipeline that we're currently going through yeah don't want to go on too long about it uh we're honestly just kind of getting into it we'll definitely do an update once we actually get on to the boats more at this point we've done like one or two tours mm -hmm. and that's about it haven't really stood any watches or anything like that yet but uh we'll definitely do some more updates as we go and just kind of looking ahead uh we just put in our preferences for our ship selection which is really exciting so if you didn't know there are aircraft carriers all around the U.S. Uh, when I say all around, we have like a uh, Washington, three locations? Yeah, three locations in the U.S., Washington, San Diego, or Norfolk, uh, 12 carriers in total, or you can go overseas mm -hmm. to Japan, but we've been there and done that, so I think we're good. Uh, we'll most likely go to Norfolk, but once we find out, we'll definitely do an update for that as well. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this quick video, and if you have any questions, as always, please leave them below. So bye.